This is a demonstration of the dirty data tracking capabilities in Visual Builder. We start by creating an edit form that would allow us to edit the information about an employee. Uh, we're going to base it on this employee ID parameter. And the functionality now is that we can click on an employee and see their information on the right side. Now, what we want to do is make sure that if we do changes in the fields over here, we don't navigate without first prompting the user to save the changes. Now, each one of those fields is mapped to this employee's variable that you can see over here. And for this employee, we can turn on the dirty data behavior to set it to track this variable. Now, once we do this, we can create a new action chain that would allow us to figure out if the data has been changed since the last time. Okay. So to do that, we're going to use a built-in action chain that is called get dirty data status. So this action, it's a new action in the JavaScript based action chains. We add it over here. And after that, we'll add an if statement. And in the if we can reference the status that is returned from the get dirty data. Now, if the status is equal to dirty, okay, so this is just a string named dirty, we know that the values of the variable has changed. So then what we can do is we can, for example, fire a notification to let the person know that the data has changed and they might want to save the changes. So we'll do a fire notification in here. And um, the next step would be to take over and add a return from this function. And in this return, we're going to return a status and we're going to set it to true if the data is indeed changed. Okay. We can also take um, and return a false state if the data has not changed. So we drag it over here into an else statement. And over here, we're going to again return a status. This time it's going to be false. So this function prompts us about the changes and returns whether there were changes or not. Since we prompted the user about the changes, maybe what we want to do now is also reset the status of the dirty um, tracking. So basically, once we notified it from this point on, we don't consider it to be dirty anymore. All right, next, what we're going to do is we're going to take the event of row selection in the table, and we're going to call our action chain that we just defined. So we'll pick the call action chain operation over here. We're going to call our is changed action chain. It's going to return a status of true or false. So what we want to do now is check what was returned. So we're going to add an if statement. And inside here, we're going to refer to the status that is being returned from the section chain. And if it is true, we know that things have changed. So we'll actually reverse the condition to say if it's not true, then we're going to assign the variable, basically switch the record. Okay. And if it is true, then we're not doing that. All right. So now let's look at the functionality. We click on an employee and you'll notice that when we click on another employee, we get this error message, even though we didn't actually change anything. So the reason is because when we actually load data into the employee object initially, we just change it from being empty to having some value. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the reset dirty status and we're going to add it at the end of the action that loads our data initially. Okay. So from that point on, when we click, the data now is clear. So now we can actually switch between the employees. If we now change something in the value, we'll get the message notifying us, hey, the unsaved changes. Right. If we then go over and navigate to another uh, user, this would now work because we reset again after the showing the notification. So the other place where we might want to do a reset is in the save button. So once we save the information about a changed record, we want to reset again the dirty status tracking. Okay, we'll put it here at the end of this action chain. And then we're going to do one more thing. In the page, there's a before exit event. 
And this is going to handle situations when we navigate to another page. In this action, we're also going to try and call our action chain that checks whether there are changes before we navigate to another page. Okay, So we're going to add a call action chain over here. We'll call the tracking of is it changed method, basically the action chain over here. And again, this is going to return a status of either true or false. So we're going to add an if statement here. And the if statement is going to be based on the status returned from this action chain. If it is changed, what we want to do is we want to cancel the navigation. Okay, and to cancel the navigation, we're going to use a return and use the payload that you're seeing here um, in the return. So one thing we can do here is just copy this value over here. And instead of two, we're going to, sorry, instead of false, we're going to have two. Okay, so we're going to cancel the navigation. Otherwise, okay, we want to uh, not cancel the navigation. So we're going to take this return statement and place it in the else. Okay, and we actually need this return item. So we can just move it over now and delete. All right, like that. So now we have our business logic for the before exit. And before exit would be invoked, for example, when you go over to the menu and try and modify it. So let's run our little application. And we get the list of employees, we click on one. We can then go over and modify some data here. And then we're going to navigate or try to navigate to another page. The navigation is going to be to fail and we're going to get this unsafe changes message from our method.